hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Strong Female Lead. Uh, this is our brainchild, our podcast that asks the mm -hmm. question, is Hollywood getting it right? Hollywood has been telling us for years what is and isn't a strong female lead. And uh, we're asking a simple question, are they getting it right? Uh, I am one of your co-hosts, Tessa. And my name is Trisha. And today we have for you a fall classic. It has everything you're looking for in your fall cozy. A fall uh, classic. <laughs> a fall classic, you know, it's not, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's appropriately named Halloween, the most important day of all of fall. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we had to, we had to do it because we had to, and I love it. And so that's what we're, that's what we've watched. We've watched the 2018 version of Halloween. Um, we did. Which is the distant, distant third installment of Halloween. So it's very confusing. There's a very long line of Halloween movies that have come out, but we're only acknowledging in this podcast, the original 1978, uh, the titled Halloween, the second film, I think it's also titled Halloween. Nice to know that they're staying on brand. <laughs> yes. Although it makes it more confusing. Yes, yeah, so and I was like, we couldn't just like start like a Roman numeral thing or like, you know, <laughs> Halloween, <laughs> something like that. But uh, sure. Uh, so the 1978, the John Car Carpenter movie, uh, Halloween 2. And then this is a Halloween remake, which is technically, it should be, I believe, the third movie in the series, just forgetting Halloween H2O you know, all of those movies from the 90s. <laughs> We're Wait. not going to talk about them. They are not to be discussed. <laughs> Wait, so this is a remake, but it it's it, not, though, right? Yeah, it's, it's a new story. Uh, it's not a, yeah, it is a new story, um, but it's not really a remake. Uh, it's like a writing of the canon. <laughs> Like, they're just like because there's this whole storyline where uh Jamie Lee Curtis is um actually a distant relative to um to Michael or like a, a stepsister and then they have this like uh niece who is somehow connected to Michael and she sees what he sees it's very like of malignant vibes <laughs> where they're like connected and she can see the crimes that are happening uh, that Michael's committing. It's a, it's a big thing and nobody liked it. Nobody liked it. <laughs> and okay. so they're just like, they're like, ha ha, that was a fun thing that we did in the nineties. We're never going to speak about it again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I accept that. And then they so gave this us. this is a reimagining? <laughs> yes. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the only things that happen are the things that happen in movie one and movie two of 1978. And I believe 1978 and 1980. When the second one came out. So those are the only things that mean anything. Yes. Uh, but if you haven't seen any of those movies, then like, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> but I mean, as someone who hasn't watched any of it, um, it might help to have background. And I'll, I'll, I'll give a brief overview of Halloween, the original, um, which is the classic. I think it's the one that most people have seen. Um, Halloween 2 is uh, fine, whatever. Um, so basically what happens in the original Halloween is uh, Michael Myers, um, 15 years after murdering his sister on Halloween night, um, escapes from a mental hospital and returns to the small field of Haddonfield, Illinois, where he... <laughs> uh, resumes his life of uh of crime wait he killed his sister he killed his sister but i yeah. thought jamie jamie Lee curtis was his sister no we're erasing that from the timeline they are not related <laughs> it's very confusing wait so the, jamie the, Lee curtis is just a girl <laughs> She's that's just in the girl. first one yes but then in the 2018 one they say she was the sister no they don't. I thought they did. Oh, no. <laughs> talked about a sister. Yes. He, yes. So he murders his sister when he's like eight years old. It was very, it was a very strange crime. I was like, I don't understand. I, whatever. Uh, I guess very John Bonet, but that's fine. Yeah. 
uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, we don't know for sure. Okay, blah blah blah. Maybe it was his brother. Okay, uh, but yes, and so he gets sent to the mental hospital for 15 years, and so in 1978 he escapes and goes on a killing spree in um, Haddonfield, Illinois, uh, and he like just happens upon Jamie Lee Curtis, who is like a babysitter. So I think he she resembles his sister, and so I think that's why she originally catches his eye. Um, and he's also a bait or she's a babysitter. And so it's like a similar relationship between uh, his sister and himself. Uh, and then she like goes into this house that he used to live in uh, when he was a kid where the murders happened on like a dare. Uh, and then he sees her and becomes obsessed with her and like murders a bunch of people, five people. Uh, and then they kind of catch him, but then did, did they know because there's a Halloween two in <laughs> 19... Mm -hmm. Uh, 81, Halloween 2 mm -hmm. comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the movie we're talking about today is technically Halloween 3, but it's also just named Halloween. So I don't know why they couldn't have fixed that, but they didn't. And so we're going to let it go. <laughs> That's just a lot. That is a lot. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't entirely make sense. And I can't believe I thought through this whole movie that... <laughs> that Jamie Lee Curtis was his sister because then I was also thinking that um, that Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter was his niece. <laughs> and I thought this was a whole family line. No. And it wasn't at all. And even when the people were talking about it, they're like, oh, and his sister. And I thought that his sister escaped and that was Jamie Lee. And the way that she yells, Michael, sounds very intimate. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I agree. And, and there is there is a, a, a universe that exists where those things are correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just no longer this universe. I don't think right. it did a great job of like, retelling the original original michael story they just pick up with jamie lee curtis as if everyone has agreed to only recognize the first halloween and halloween 2 as canon and then yeah i don't think they did a great job because they they try to do it in dialogue like there's a scene where um the granddaughter is walking with uh two friends like at the beginning and uh yes. they say something about like oh yeah wasn't it why do or people always say that um Michael was uh, your grand, like, wasn't it your grandma's brother? And she's like, no, that's like something that people made up to comfort themselves. And I was like, who, A, what? No. <laughs> what uh, is com comforting about that? Uh, exactly. I was like, what's happening in Haddonfield? That like, you know, if my brother's my killer, then it's okay. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's just a little rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Only so smoke. I missed that. I guess I thought that they said that she was his sister. Um, and so I was like, oh, okay, okay. And then I just ran with it in my head. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that that would have added an extra layer for them to keep that detail. I just, I just didn't like the, I think like, I don't know, whichever movies Paul Rudd is in is the one where there's a, a niece connected to Michael and she's like seeing what he sees and like, they're like very connected. I was like, when that when that Halloween storyline popped up, I was like, okay, this, this is done. We are it's done out. here. We are done here. Uh, it's very but I, six, six cents. Yeah. But I think in Halloween two or three, they do, that's where that whole like story arc begins where Jamie Lee Curtis is adopted and uh, Michael is her older brother, younger brother, maybe. Uh, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's not important. It's not important because it's not, it's not real anymore. No. Because it's the 90s and we're yeah. just pretending that it didn't happen. Just, okay. <laughs> like a lot of people do in the 90s. We're just going to pretend like it didn't happen. I hold on to the, forward. <laughs> yeah. I hold on to the 90s desperately, but some of the fashion I might want to pretend didn't happen for me personally. Yeah. Um, I said the good hair. Flannel. The hair and like, yes. why, why, why was there glitter hairspray? And why did my mom allow it? Why did my mom allow it? <laughs> I did not have that. Oh, yeah. Glittery hairspray and those butterfly clips. Everything had glitter on it. So much oh, glitter. Oh, God. You know what I had? And I'm wondering if this was, this could have been late 80s. 
maybe early 90s, but I had one of those clips and they're like big clips. They're oh. not to really clip your hair. They're mm -hmm. just truly an accessory. And it had oh. balloons, tiny, mm -hmm. tiny balloons attached to it. Okay. Like insane. And then I would pair it with tights, but with socks over them. Cause that's yeah. what we did. Yeah. And then all, them with saddle shoes. <laughs> and my mom, my mom wouldn't let me wear socks over tights because she thought it looked ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so what I would do is I would wait and I would stay under my comforter mm -hmm. right until it was time to go to the bus. Like I would dress and then I would just sit in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I would dress, eat, sit in bed, and then I would race out to the bus rather than just like putting my socks in, you know, my backpack or something. So there's, there's a story. Um, but I didn't see, yes, but I, I don't know. Maybe Jamie Lee Curtis was wearing balloon stuff in her hair. I don't know. I would have to check the 90s movies. Were they supposed to take place in the 90s? Yes, I do believe everything is like contemporary to when it's being filmed. Uh, they acknowledge time has passed, except for between Halloween 1 and Halloween 2. It's the same night. And also in the 2018 version um, and the brand new version or the brand new, uh, what is the fourth movie in a series called? <laughs> mm. Oh, I, um, Halloween. <laughs> it's called Halloween, most yeah. likely. Yeah, Halloween Kills. Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills are also, this. it's the same, it's over the, cross, over the course of two days. So the 31st, the 30th, 31st, and November 1st uh, is the spree, spree killing of Michael Myers returned to Haddonfield. This is out, this is out of control, how it's, little they care about the timeline. And I just, my God. I, just like, I have so many questions for Jamie Lee's character. And I was like, if you are this paranoid about Michael, because we open up and we find out, um, Let's just jive right in because yeah. I just we need to talk about all of my observations on how mm -hmm. odd Jamie Lee uh, Curtis's character is. I love the movie. I think I think we've got some strong contenders for SFLs um, in a, in like all of the female cast. I was like, except for that reporter. There is a group of podcasters just like putting, <laughs> just like ruining podcasting. <laughs> so I I mean I'm, I'm I kind of love it, but then I was also like. Mm to die that way <laughs> and for the cause I don't know I, don't know I just I like I just hope that they were like of a real publication like in this universe like I hope that they're like the they're like on the same journalistic level of, as like an NPR because otherwise it makes it so creepy that these are just uh random weirdos with a recorder trying to like talk to murderers like that it seems so insane to me and I feel like it shouldn't be allowed I feel like we shouldn't allow people to do that. It's very intense. They were flying a little too close to the sun. Yeah, I, I don't know. And like, it, there was no protection also. Like there wasn't, they were just, they just went out into the wreck area. Yes, yes. And, and I was, was like, I mean, not that there needs to be a net or something, but I just, it just seemed. A net. <laughs> Like, I'm like, so I don't really know, like, Wait, a, a net that falls onto Michael or that separates him? What? <laughs> He's like in a. I'm just, I'm I like, just curious, like, are all they criminally, criminally insane? And is everyone being, but yeah, maybe, maybe like a mousetrap sort of net situation that falls or might, or a little pod that goes on top of them, like, why isn't something else happening? Isn't this is I mean, what you tried. This is just how you capture people. Isn't this what you wanted to do when you had the package me? You're like, let's get the drops on them. Actually, <laughs> what I want, yeah, what I wanted with him, I think, was to have like just more home alone. But I yeah. don't even know if they did this in home alone. Just have paint fall on him or something, you know, like. <laughs> but now I'm thinking, yeah, netting. <laughs> that's where that's where 
that's just where can't. it really is. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> I I would love to see you head a police department. I would pay all the money <laughs> to see you capture criminals using only hijinks and home alone skills. <laughs> What if, what if it was way more like, <laughs> what if I had more success? <laughs> I think you would. People would not expect it. They'd be like, oh, uh, who, who dropped all these marbles? Trisha's, Trisha's task force, <laughs> just with like playground <laughs> tactics. It's just more of a, cre- like it's yes. more a, cr- a creative task force. Like <laughs> just seeing if we can really like, you know, put a stop on crime. Yeah, I just in, imagine in Chicago. <laughs> I imagine like on a street corner, you have like lightly covered a net with like fall leaves, just to see if you can catch like <laughs> someone, <laughs> anybody, <laughs> catch somebody, anybody. And you want to know what's even funnier is when I was thinking of net. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking of catching them with a net. I was thinking like just like a super tall net in between them <laughs> like a force field like a net force field <laughs> i don't know why why i have net in my head oh i know why i have net in my head because zach and i were at a friend's place and she has um like a high staircase that and there's like it's a there's quite a bit of a drop to the basement. And so um, she doesn't want her kid to to fall. Um, It's not, but it's sort of like a, I'm, I can't even think of the word, but like, it's not the staircase, but it's just, there's not, you know, there's not a lot separating the kid from this, this fall. There's a banister, but like, um, and so she was talking about having a net like to catch him if he fell <laughs> and so I think that which that's amazing to think about <laughs> and I was like oh like now I just have net in my head <laughs> <laughs> and I do I love that idea <laughs> let's just net people internet no no actual net <laughs> um I'm on very board practical I am for it I'm on board I want to redirect any tax dollars that I give to the government to this task force uh and just to see I mean let's just throw all the ideas at the wall and see what sticks I love it and, and we'd love some volunteers yes we don't know how much um <laughs> funding we're gonna get during this experimental phase yeah so <laughs> I'm gonna get it on the ground floor uh you know I've got at least like, I don't know, I, I can invest like 5k into this experiment. <laughs> in oh, policing. okay. Okay. Yeah. Policing. All right. Yeah. Uh, anyways, but, so it know, is quite dangerous. Yes. And uh, somebody who we should all be taking pages out of her book would be Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie because she's the most <laughs> intense tactical force that's ever happened to Haddonfield, <laughs> Illinois. When, why, in my opinion, okay, so the movie opens with the journalists. We'll just, I'll just walk you, we'll, we'll walk through it together. Yeah. Movie opens with the journalists uh, being kind of dickheads and uh, they're trying to get an interview with Michael Myers to study him, a la serial um, with Adnan Syed and uh, that NPR podcast from like the early 2000s, guys. You remember, you remember, you remember. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so all of that, um, we're trying to make Michael their, you know, ticket to fame. So they go and they try to interview him. And then Michael's just standing in the yard. I'm saying in air quotes. And like, it, it looked like a chessboard with psychopaths on it. And I was like, I don't know. It did. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, is this like a, like a multiverse thing? Are all of these people going to get their own movies? Like, I'm so curious now, like what's happening in this mental hospital for the criminally insane like it seems like a batman situation kind of yes that there could be some sort of cape crusader come in and in this case it's jamie lee curtis uh to just like punch everyone and and save the day and so that doesn't okay. happen okay and now i am kind of thinking that michael might just be able to tear through a net <laughs> <laughs> so it might i mean even just using his teeth like just so it's not really a ton of protection but no 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 they make nets out of all sorts of things you can get very strong (laughs) i'm trying to remember was he 
his hands weren't was there was his hand was he cuffed in any sort of way or was there any sort of weird I'm trying to remember in that couple scene. weeks since I watched it yeah like was it a little silence of the lambs or uh he was like I just rewatched it this morning because I was like you know I don't really remember what happened <laughs> it has been a couple uh, of weeks and I'm just like I'm just gonna fly yeah. um I'm just gonna fly with it but <laughs> But Whatever. he's like chained to a cement block on the floor, um, okay. but he is handcuffed and chained to a block. And he's like facing away from the podcasters because he obviously does not want to speak to them. Uh, because right. Because they're, so. yeah, he can tell that they're hacks uh, just by their mm-hmm. footsteps, uh, which is impressive. Okay. I'm also like extremely impressed by Michael. He's aged very well. I mean, he's well into his 60s mm-hmm. and he is very fit. Uh, and I was like, I don't know what they're feeding them in this mental hospital or like what his fitness regimen is, but it's dragging that it's dragging that <laughs> cement block. <laughs> cement block. <laughs> it's, it's very much just, you know, what, what's the, what's the word for like the workout where you're basically like, just like throwing sandbags around and like Oh, CrossFit. Um, CrossFit. Yeah. It's, yeah. His, it's his own. He's just dragging that cement block. <laughs> to and fro <laughs> just it's really escaping netting up. carry the block escape netting carry the block <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay so we we have these oh, yeah. yeah so we've got the those two being jerks and then the one of the uh podcast co-hosts pulls out michael's uh I didn't know this, but I feel like people keep saying that it's a William Shatner mask. And I didn't know if that was a joke or for serious, if the original Halloween mask was of um, William Shatner, because that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> what? Why would it, how would it be a Shatner mask? Like, it, like the original mask is just like a white kind of gross looking mask. Uh, what, did know. William Shatner just wear that mask? I think it's a, it's a Halloween costume. Um, but like does the mask look like William Shatner I'm confused about the connection to William Shatner I feel like it was just a bad mold from the 70s like I don't know how accurate masks Uh, were in the 70s but it looks like Shatner I didn't think so and I'm like but wow but I honestly can't tell if that was just an internet joke or for serious so somebody else find out somebody else do the research and report back I'm looking up, looking it up. I mean, it's kind of a mean thing to William Shatner, but I'm okay. <laughs> oh, there are versions of it. Okay. Okay. All right. There are some versions of the mask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, listeners, you know, chime in. Okay. Yeah. All right. We, have, we haven't even made it. We haven't even made it out of <laughs> yeah we're still in the intro but uh but it, it really it really doesn't pick up the per- this movie is very long I was like this is one of the longest horror movies I've ever seen uh but uh well worth it in the end well worth it uh so yeah, we've good. we've talked about the podcasters so they're our first uh our introductory storyline who's reacquainting us with our long lost uh best friend Michael um and then we immediately, uh, well, rather immediately, we switch over to finding out what's been happening with Jamie Lee Curtis in all these 30 some odd years since the events of the original 1978 and 81 Halloween. And guess what Guys, she's been she's up been, to? She's, she's been prepping. She's been the least effective doomsday prepper I've ever seen in my life. Uh, none least of her effective? <laughs> least effective. What are you talking about? She was ready for him. Was she? Because it seems like if you're trying to not be murdered, you'd like leave the town. Like you would try to not be in the exact same location where you were just found. She (laughs) She moved to the woods. (laughs) She could have moved. She could have moved. Yeah. (laughs) You could have had a great great child and like mother-daughter relationship, but she's like, no, this is my home, Haddonfield, Illinois. Come on now, I've lived in Illinois my almost my entire life. It's not that great. It's Wait not- a second. Wait a second. Maybe she stayed so that she could protect her family when but, he came, when he got out. But she could have moved them. Yeah, I mean, she. It seems like. It, hmm. 
I don't know. I guess they never really just like said where the mental hospital was. I don't know if that was all. Well, it had to be in Illinois or Wisconsin because they didn't travel very far before Michael escaped. And it's like, oh, I just Mm-mm. also happened to be in Haddonfield. <laughs> like there's only one. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there might only be one mental hospital in the state. It could just uncoincidentally be right outside <laughs> Haddonfield. But why would you want to be that close to the man who like murdered and or tried to murder you and stalk you when you have the option to leave? You know what? Because she was not only prepping for her reunion with Michael, she was prepping for Halloween of 2018. <laughs> she was prepping for this reimagining. That has to be it. That's the only logical explanation. I mean, I was just like shocked. I was like, wait. I was like, wait. Whoa. So she spent like, mm, I'm going to go with like at least $100,000 on fortifying this house. Uh, ruined her relationship with her daughter uh, you know and granddaughter and I guess whoever created her daughter uh, with her that person was never spoken of Um, so I'm assuming they're that they're dead Uh, and he just yeah he just died yeah oh 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 who created I think they were divorced and then whatever well dead yeah Yeah. (laughs) oh to her oh yeah yeah (laughs) definitely dead to her uh, mm-hmm. But I'm like, you've, you've just, you've done, you've put so much effort into doing the weirdest things where I just feel like if you would have just like, even moved to state over, like make it harder for Michael to find you, maybe change your name. You know, there are, I'm like, I've seen the born identity, so I know it's possible and it doesn't seem that hard to just like pick up and become someone else. Yeah, she's in the same home that she obviously, is it the same home she grew up in? Or is it just the same home she raised her kids in? I think raised her kids because she's like on the outskirts of town. So we might not know. And how did he find her? Did he pull out a yellow pages? Probably. Like, she's <laughs> probably listed. Like she didn't do any of the practical things to hide. He didn't have a cell phone. <laughs> she could have been. Why wasn't she in witness protection? Well, Please. I mean, yeah, I feel like she, she could have been protected yes um yeah especially when that creepy doctor was like uh there was like a recording that they were playing in one scene and it was like oh what is the recommended like uh thing to do with a case like michael and it's like put him to death and i was like so if you fear him this much and only think that like the only course of action uh there's no restorative justice that's on the table for this man and he must die uh why can't you offer his like victim that he's come after multiple times witness protection I was I'm like it's a failure of the government actually uh yeah the government failed her yeah and she sort of she sort of failed herself but he found her quite easily quite easily and she found him I was like I think this is like a what is like a twin flame thing like I think maybe they both love each other Mm -hmm. and this Mm -hmm. could have been a completely different I would love this retold as a rom-com where it's like he just keeps trying to kill her but oh yeah that's it's the only way he knows lang- it's his, it's his love, love language. language yes I would love I would be very excited very excited for the final girl trope to be turned into like the uh like a bridal trope to be like <laughs> I'm the only one who survived so I guess we're getting married type thing I love that it's very meant to be it's very <laughs> twin flame they're I mean yeah he's been missing her this whole time I think so. I think it's sweet that he's held a flame for her for 30 years. Like, <laughs> a lot of relationships, including her own marriage, doesn't don't last that long. And, mm-hmm. you know, some things deserve to be applauded. That's one of There's them. There's commitment. Yeah. There's commitment. He's waited a long time. Yes. Just let him kill mm. you, God. <laughs> and so, wait a second. Was he being, um, he wasn't being, like, released. He was just being transferred. Yeah. Right? Or... He- okay right I was like because that's that's insane I would but then all wait a second to see him in some sort of like uh <laughs> halfway uh, house yes halfway house just like making eggs like yeah <laughs> just attending his recovery meetings yes and still back to eggs. everyone don't look at my face <laughs> finding finding secure employment yes he's yeah. like a checkout person at Walgreens now it's just like he's trying to start over He's got a caseworker. He's starting fresh. It works if you work it, Michael. It works if you work it. Oh, <laughs> uh, but 
Okay, but then, but I'm kind of remembering her saying that he was going to be let out, right? Because she was waiting. Was she waiting at some, or was it? She somehow had a spidey sense that something was going to go off. And I, okay. I personally think that there's another like conversation that was cut out of the movie where she is plotting with that evil doctor this whole time in order to like set this up as like a, a final battle between the two of them. She's like, the only way I'm going to be able to move on, this is my own added scene. This did not happen in the movie, but mm-hmm. uh, I imagine her going to the doctor. They've made some sort of plot. And the only way that she feels that she can move on with her life and like be, you know, reintroduced to her family system is if she's able to kill Michael. And the state said, okay. Yeah, I think they were on board with her eliminating him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right. So on we go. Yeah, on we go. Uh, (laughs) Or we can stay. No, no. Uh, Forward we must go because we have other SFL potential candidates to speak of Mm -hmm. and they they barely uh, scratched the surface. So we've Mm -hmm. talked about Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, She's been uh, doomsday prepping and uh, getting all the firearms in the state of Illinois um for her yard uh she has this very cool basement that she's completely tricked out uh with (laughs) a garage door opener and I was like that seems slow uh in the case of I guess Michael moves slow so I guess that's fine he's 60 something so fine again very fit this man is very fit (laughs) he's very fit and he does he moves slowly and deliberately Mm-hmm. with a lot of patience yes I like that yeah <laughs> I mean it doesn't seem uh yeah I was gonna say like everything it just it seems everything he does to me seems premeditated and I appreciate that in a way mm-hmm. um you know I like to compare this to the scariest movie I've ever seen um <laughs> no I'm forgetting the name of it what is it called that. probably i've just d- finally deleted it from memory because I, it's just like a random spree killer uh and like people are just home and i don't like that i don't like random. oh oh the strangers or yes. the yes um yeah with liv tyler called? is liv tyler yeah. there yeah and uh, there's, ma- there's masks yes i didn't like that i didn't like that i don't like the idea of that i don't like that idea out in the universe uh, and where it's just <laughs> totally random Yes, he is like, okay, yeah, there are a couple random kills, but mostly deliberate. He's like, I'm just trying to find Jamie. Please get out of my way. Uh, Except for that whole, I didn't, okay, we'll get there when we get there. Uh, (laughs) So she's tricked out her basement. She's a terrible relationship with her daughter, whose name is Karen. Uh, Love her, Arrested Development. Yes, she is so good. Judy Greer is an, uh, I just want to give her an SFL. I don't know how she's not popped up before. Well, I do know because she plays a lot of supporting roles, but she is an SFL in my heart for for always. She's great. She's kind of like that woman who um, is in all the American horror stories, like a different kind of actress, but deserves more leading roles. Like she's mm-hmm. always good. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm talking Sarah, about? I forget Sarah that Paulson? Name. No. Um, the other one who was in a movie that we she was the leading actress one oh, that we watched the one who's like uh in, in American Horror Lily. Story she's the white witch she's always talking about a white witch she yeah, loves she loves <laughs> Stevie Nicks yes 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 um yes. she is a Lily wonderful or... actress yeah Lily Rabe there we go mm-hmm. she's fantastic but we so Judy Greer's I oh yeah I'm sure we did um, Judy Greer is kind of like a com- typically a comedic mm-hmm. version of that, but always delivers. Yes. Sort of like a Catherine Hahn. Yes. You know? Uh, Catherine Hahn is great. Yeah, she's from very, very close to where I grew up. Oh, I love it. Did you and watch? I had a very similar upbringing, it sounded like. And I was just like, oh, well, how we took different paths. <laughs> Our paths are definitely different. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> what? What? What were you going to say? <laughs> uh, I, 
I don't remember. It wasn't important. I like <laughs> I like your story. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Not even that good of a like a tangent because it didn't go anywhere. It just stopped. Not but all tangents okay. have to go places. Not all. Right. T- not you know. Not every road is a is a hi- is a highway. Some of them are just roads. It's about the journey, people, not the destination. <laughs> I love this episode already. Uh, <laughs> it's really good. Uh, yeah. Yes. And so the third uh, nominee for SFL and the third uh, female character in the film is the granddaughter, whose name I never quite caught because she's kind of boring the whole time. Um, let's, let me look. I'm sorry. I will be professional. What is her name? Is Allison. Her name? Allison is a 25-year-old high school student. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just <laughs> age her up or choose a different actress because there is absolutely no way. <laughs> I'm going to look and oh, see her yeah. age. Uh, and but I was why? just like, are you the teacher? Oh, I'm so concerned. Like, wh- why do you look so unbelievable? Like, wow. Like, or yeah. maybe she was just acting next to people who looked very young. Just and in the face. why does her name have to be spelled so ridiculously? Her character's name is spelled a-L-L-Y-S-O-N. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever seen a spelling like that? Why? Why? Is that a typo? Anyways, that's what IMDb says. I, oh, I mean, oh. but, um, oh, she's from Wheaton. <laughs> okay. Well, this is close to our heart. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you getting out. <laughs> Uh, but yes, but she plays a, uh, I'm going to call her a precocious teen, uh, Mm. who is like, uh, Mm -hmm. kind of a know-it-all who wants her family to be intact. She's kind of the go-between between between her mother and grandmother, who she always calls grandmother, which sounds so odd every time she says it. Maybe it's me, but I don't know that it, like anyone who's not a part of the royal family calls their grandmother, grandmother. Mm, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) I do. It's just, it has a, the flavor of yesteryear. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just really all about it. <laughs> it's like, I call, like me, it. call me by my formal title, grandmother. <laughs> I like mother, not even grandma. Because I, yeah, grandmother, mother, brother, sister. I'd like it all to come back. We don't need names. <laughs> Although it would be difficult to live in a nameless society because you wouldn't be able to call out for exactly I, I feel like that's like a common cult tactic where it's like you don't need a name anymore you're now just sister <laughs> why do you think I brought it up oh should we would you should we bring that into as a church tactic is everyone now just brother and sister Aram yeah. are you listening now you're just brother yes. like there is no there's no more first name <laughs> brother <laughs> well he is or he's deacon oh no, that's true that's true you know, he does have a special role, so yeah. he'll stick out, but he does not have a name. No, you're just Steven. <laughs> we have names. Yes. <laughs> but we need something to set us apart other than our, our names are multiple lovers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and multiple lovers. Okay. So grandmother. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Yes. And so, uh, she is, uh, I guess it must be the beginning of the school year, but they're going to like a, hol- a Halloween dance, her and her little friend group um, after she's won like some like, you know, they have to set her up as being worthy of survival. So she is not only a precocious teen, but she's also like uh, on like the, whatever the Dean's list equivalent to high school is that. Uh, and she's like very, like uh, very liberal. She's going with her boyfriend at the moment as Bonnie and Clyde, but they've switched the, genders of the costume mm-hmm. such a rebel uh and so rebel. <laughs> you know yes. oh no I was gonna start saying that's so metal uh because I keep hearing people say it and I want to join in so that's so metal of her uh, <laughs> I'm gonna continue to her. say it in a monotone voice also yep that's so <laughs> metal uh, <laughs> um she's rough she's a little, she's rough around the edges man yes yes um, and so, yeah, so now we, we have the stage, we have all of our female characters, this horrible dynamic that's going on between them, which I actually really like, um, even though I feel like Jamie Lee Curtis, his character goes about it in a way that I think is inefficient. Um, she does do her best to, um, 
protect her family in her own way. And I'd love to see like a final, and I, I mean, I love a movie with an older leading lady. Like, yes, mm-hmm. yes, Jamie Lee Curtis. You mm-hmm. know, the original final girls have come back uh, to show mm-hmm. everyone how it's done. Like the performances I think in this movie were pretty solid, even though like, you know. Totally. Yeah. But I do like the, like what is obviously a mental health struggle that's like started at, you know, in 1978 on the first Halloween that's continued as a through line. Like I like to see like that she's been affected. I mean, I'm, it's sad to see that she's been affected and not been able to move on and make, uh, you know, healthy choices. It seems like Karen's job, she might be some sort of therapist because she says cognitive behavioral therapy, like so clearly. And I was like, she needs CBT. And I was like, okay. Uh, but everybody could use CBT. So like the way she says it, she's just like, no. Your grandmother is not okay. Mm-hmm. She needs cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I was like, I hope she's a therapist because otherwise it does kind of sound like she's shaming her to be like, mm-hmm. she needs that specific therapy. There's no hope if she doesn't get that one thing. Because her thoughts are wrong. Yes. Um, I was like, welcome to the club. We're not all prepping, but thank you. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I like it like put out there in the ether as like a suggestion, like, Hey, if you suffer from, uh, uh, you know, thoughts like this, if this behavior you recognize in someone in your own life, maybe cognitive behavioral therapy is something that you could look into (gasps) also. (laughs) Oh my God. Wait, I would love if Halloween had like trigger warning in the beginning. And then also said, if you are a loved one, you are a loved one are suffering from prepping over like an overabundance of prepping strategies yes and the mental health um struggles please god yeah please turn this movie off or press one at the end or like you know please do something else (laughs) this is not for you uh exactly. I love that. And then and then it has like um my crazy ex-girlfriend where she like pops through the yeah. screen and then it has Michael and he's like Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> like in the opening credit. <laughs> we should have made this. I think our version five stars. Mm-hmm. Five stars. Totally. Yes. Okay. So we've got the stage. The stage has been set. Just set. And, everyone's uh, worthy of survival. Everyone's worthy of survival because she's the original final girl. Uh, we've got the innocent teen. Uh, we've got her uh, boyfriend who's like really being set up to be kind of a bad person. I, I'm very curious for what happens in Halloween Kills. I'm going to go see it uh, this week. Mm. Uh, we are. Because it's next week's movie, so I do need to see it this week. <laughs> well, it's SFL. Yeah. So we have an SFL date, people. Yeah. So, you know, it's a double header. We're going to watch it and then record it the same day. Boom. Boom. So it'll be fresh. (laughs) (laughs) It'll be real fresh. Uh, I'm very excited to see because, like, I, in rewatching the Halloween, I, I noticed a lot more of them setting up um, her boyfriend's character as, like, um, you know, a part of a misfit, uh, family or like a way like a is that, is that the term like a wayward family or like the <laughs> black sheep family of the small town like what do you call them um i don't really know but kind of like shameless yeah yeah so he's like a part of a shameless family uh who like uh the dad used to sell drugs or at like a weird dinner scene like every time the boyfriend is brought up it's always about his parents and his family also um, so maybe mm-hmm. they're Michael's family or like somehow connected to Michael's family uh, in the new movie. So that's one of my predictions for Halloween Kills is that her boyfriend is somehow related to Michael um, or a doomsday cult. Because mm-hmm. we don't see how the bus gets into an accident. So Michael escapes after his bus that transporting him from the mental hospital between mental hospitals crashes and he is let loose in the town of Haddonfield again on Halloween. I assume that he did something to crash it, but you're right. We don't know. It's left open to interpretation, much like why the 90s movies don't count. (laughs) (laughs) 
and why Jamie wasn't his sister then was his sister then wasn't it's just yeah. open it's yeah. open for us to fill in the blanks yeah I like that it's like a little uh, mad lib of Halloween and mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'm not mad about it uh Mm-mm. But yes, so <laughs> Michael has escaped and he's loose in Haddonfield uh, and he immediately starts his murder spree. The first two kills being uh, the mechanic working on the um, podcaster's car and then the shop attendant. And then we get his first two kills of like actual characters who are the podcasters. And like inside of me, I was like, yay, go away. You guys are kind of terrible, but. It was sort of a commentary, like, because that's right around the time. Well, true crime podcasting seemed to, like, really, really take off. What was mm-hmm. it, like, 2016 or something? I mean, I don't know. Whenever Serial came out, but it was it was sort of, like, just a commentary. Like, yeah, you might get killed. Yeah. Well, at least if you go unsecured to a, <laughs> to a mental... Maybe, maybe don't, mental. like taunt the you know it's like I feel like it's like hitting the glass in an aquarium and that's what they did to Michael until he reacted and you knew his reaction was going to be murder he doesn't know how to do anything else no it's his one true talent yeah just let him live uh let him let him live his truth exactly like you can't I mean I know the movie does set it up and I I do hate I hate this dichotomy but it does set you up to be like oh well they kind of deserved it I mean, they obviously it, did not deserve it, but like, didn't they? It, it truly, like, truly <laughs> does try to make us um, <laughs> compassionate <laughs> towards, towards Michael. Michael. <laughs> I was like, here he is in his like chessboard of a mental hospital, just like living what he thinks is his best life until a rude reminder shows up and reminds him what could have been and what, what joy be, he had. <laughs> what wouldn't be? his best life just dragging a cinder block (laughs) back and forth and he's like I just can't wait I'm gonna get super fit I'm gonna get swole and I am just going to go to town yes on everybody let me live let him live so Mm -hmm. he does murder those two and that Mm -hmm. I really did like I like those I like the scenes uh, where they died uh just like I thought they were really very well done um Mm -hmm. with a girl like climbing underneath the bathroom stall because yeah what would you do in that scenario I was like ooh, good point good point Jamie Lee didn't prepare us for a bathroom scenario so I was very uh jarred I was like I don't know nobody nobody told me that this would be on the test and where do you go that's very difficult that is a good good place for murder Mm -hmm. because it just the walls are so high (sighs) but also kind of flimsy there's just that little piece of metal holding the door uh which mm-hmm. actually was funny. And I was like, isn't it just a tiny piece of metal? Like, this is like a huge man who's like, can't get through this tiny piece of metal. Uh, or maybe he was just doing it to taunt her. I was confused. And I was like, don't play He's with your like, food, Mike. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's just in this. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's just not, he so strong that he doesn't know how to handle yes. something that doesn't require root strength. <laughs> He just can't, he can't do it. Uh, yes. And so Michael is now on the loose in the town of Haddonfield and they have a hilarious scene where the cops find out. And I guess one guy is like a cop and the other one is his boss. The black guy is his boss. And he's like, what are we going to do? Cancel Halloween? <laughs> what? Yes. Cancel Halloween. Yes. Tell everyone. Yeah. Tell everyone. A hundred percent cancel <laughs> Halloween. It's fine. Everyone will be they'll be fine exactly. we should cancel cancel halloween the name of the movie is halloween you know it's halloween you 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 know you know this is happening granted they don't know the name of the movie is halloween they're not supposed to know because they're in the movie but <laughs> it's halloween this happened people yes. yes i'm like i'm sorry there's a spree killer loose in your town and you're just like keep it going everyone and he loves halloween <laughs> he loves halloween like it's literally it's his favorite. It's, it's his favorite. favorite holiday. Yeah, and how he celebrates is by stabby stabby. And so maybe we tell everyone to you know be you know hide your hide your knives. Yeah, I don't no, think I've no ever seen him use a gun. Concerned. Yeah, he's been shot multiple times. It seems to have no effect on him. Maybe Michael's yeah. a superhero. 
superhero, actually. Maybe. He's just always wearing a bulletproof vest. So, maybe that would make sense. <laughs> he's always ready. Yeah. <laughs> or just a couple of pillows, whatever. Or he's so strong a that his muscles. Pillows? What? <laughs> straps himself up with a couple of pillows plus his strength and bullets just bounce off of his strength. That's it. <laughs> Oh Lord. Love it. I love it. Here, I just I just love the idea of him like just like having pillows, just stopping bullets with like magic <laughs> pillows. And, like... <laughs> oh, there's a lot of magic in this. I loved it. Uh, and so <laughs> so we move forward still. Uh, Michael starts the starts the killing um, and so we do have one like brilliant aside which I really love I love these kills I love these characters um, mm -hmm. of the babysitter and the young boy uh, mm -hmm. and I love their banter between each other and I was like this makes me want to be a babysitter I've never babysat anyone mm -hmm. um, and I was like oh I think I'd be good at it if this is what babysitting is people made it seem really hard uh, you know in other movies yeah if you have a cool kid like that you know yeah, yeah it's cool. Uh, do you interview the child also when you babysit? I wonder. Um, no. <laughs> Yo, what if they're like not cool? Yeah, I was a nanny slash babysitter, and no, no, yeah. you don't get to make that decision. Oh. Although you should, you should yeah. require. Because it's like, yeah, just because I get along with your parents doesn't mean I get along with your kid. Like, fair. Or the kid should interview. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on board for that. Uh, I like that. Really yeah. empower them. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, you're going to have to listen to them, so you may as well get on board now. Uh, mm -hmm. A baby boss. Yeah, oh, what a great movie. Boss Baby. Mm. Love it. Boss Baby is secretly my dad's favorite movie, and he just won't admit it, and I just think it's hilarious. Uh, oh, that's a real movie? <laughs> yes. Oh, I thought you just came up with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never seen that? No, just like my 60 something year old dad is in love with Boss Baby and I love it. I love it. It's hilarious. He's constantly watching it and he's like, what? No, no, it's just on. Always? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's always just, on? It's just, <laughs> just keeps running. It's like, oh. Because ah. you keep choosing it. And that's why it's right. always on. <laughs> yeah. We're in, the, we're in the world of streaming. Yeah. You can't really make the argument that something just, just keeps playing exactly. on the channel. Exactly um okay back to the movie so uh you know unfortunately that babysitter does die she was dry humping someone so obviously she's marked for death uh that's what mm -hmm. happens when you dry hump anyone so like be disgusting. careful disgusting be yeah. careful Dis disgusting uh, <laughs> <laughs> the kid survives and so thank god her boyfriend does die because again that dry humping so those were bad people they did a bad thing and therefore they deserve to die uh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's just how the movie works Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're moving along. We're now at a dance. We're at the dance with Allison with the weird spelling of her name and her Allie, creepy boyfriend. Allie son. Allie son. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I just thought of the karate kid and I was like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, I, I heard that in Mr. Miyagi's voice and <laughs> Allie son. Ab absolutely true. <laughs> uh, sorry, I digress. Mm -hmm. um, so we're at the dance. They're Buddy and Clyde. Uh, Allie son is there with her boyfriend from the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, and then he starts making out with some other girl at the dance and then they have a big fight and they break up. He throws her phone in what looks like a vat of cheese. And I was like, what mm -hmm. kind of liquid mm -hmm. is that? It's concerning. Mm -hmm. uh, don't have yeah. that out. I feel like it shouldn't be sitting out like that. That's gross. Yeah, uh, it's gross. <laughs> but uh, gross. yeah. And so she is going to go home. Uh, you know, the cops are out. Everyone's being told to go home, so she's gonna go home. She runs into her like creepy nice guy friend, uh, that oh yeah, that Ugh. guy who somehow deserves uh her, deserves yeah. a shot. I was like, yeah, I love that they included that guy. Um, I was like, everyone should see themselves because that guy's creepy, <laughs> and I feel like I feel like I run into nice guys a lot, and I'm like, mm, pass. You're kind of the worst of them. <laughs> yeah, that's like oh god, a promising young woman. Mm -hmm. did you see that no we should do it on the podcast that, though I feel like I feel like we should yeah. have done it by now yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely you're right um we should and it's sort of like those nice guys that yeah that pretend that they're 
you know, they pretend that they're nice and then they take advantage of it. It's gross. Mm-hmm. Anyways. So Ali Sean mm-hmm. has to fight that guy off. Um, and then luckily Michael's there as the cleanup crew and just like takes that guy out. And then again, we're just like, is Michael our savior? Is he a superhero? Because he's doing good work. He's an angel, actually. I so <laughs> I think we all have different charges from the Lord and his might be murdering for good because if Batman can do it, why can't Michael? Is Michael Batman? Wow. I think I just Listeners. I think I just Listeners, chime in. Chime in. Let us just, know. Wow. I just, Is he? Ugh. He's poor Batman. He's poor Batman? Yeah. The only difference I can see is that Batman has Wayne Enterprises. And, oh. you know, Michael right. doesn't. <laughs> doesn't seem to have a side hustle. But they both have British assistants. Uh, that weird guy, that doctor was following him around. Uh, oh, yeah. And then, you know. Wow. I like this. And you know what? Frankly, it makes just as much sense as the trajectory <laughs> of all these other movies. So maybe, maybe you just are the trajectory of Michael. So maybe you just, maybe you need to submit that. I think this, I think it's, I think there's a connection. I think there's I really a connection. Do. I want all of the conspiracy theorists out there to take this and run with it. Uh, do mm-hmm. the research. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. please do. I love it. I love that. Um, where were we? Where are I we love that. Jer- I love that journey for Michael. I do too. I feel yeah. like there's a redemption arc in there somewhere. You know, mm-hmm. everyone, everyone deserves a second chance. For Michael, it might be a tenth or eleventh, but we're fine. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm still, I'm still on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So he's just, he's just killing. He's just, he's just having killing. a good time. He's having a good time. He's just like, you know, boys will be boys. And so uh, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, doing what boys do, I suppose. Uh, yes. And then, uh, and then we finally have the showdown. You know, <sighs> there's some other deaths, but like we, we get to the showdown with they Michael. Don't they, they don't, mm-hmm. they don't. Let's be honest. They don't matter. Uh, <laughs> the big showdown where um, Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael meet eye to eye, mano a mano, and we get to see all of Jamie Lee's uh, death traps go uh, work, kind of. They kind of work, but also they don't work because uh, Karen's husband dies pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. I was like, oh, yeah, no- but honestly, I don't think Jamie really cared for him. I didn't. I didn't really care for him. I yeah, I think he just, she was just like, this is just easier. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I've been waiting for this opportunity. To get rid of this guy for years. <laughs> oh, just been such a drain. <laughs> uh, and then I'm not going to give away the ending, but the movie ends in a ball of fire. What? When do, since when do we not do spoilers? Well, you have to see the next movie oh okay it's just a tbd until episode mm-hmm. uh, until next mm-hmm. week and then we find out the end of this movie and what happens next uh in oh. halloween kills okay got it but we can talk about like i mean it was kind of a badass showdown because we got to see all her gadgets yeah i mean right. yeah we could totally but i mean, like we don't actually know what happens at the end Fair. because it's kind of a cliffhanger it does seem like he dies because the entire house catches on flame catches um on fire but apparently it doesn't because <laughs> there's catches. another movie and we're like because uh, there's another movie <laughs> featuring michael so you know he just what i mean his pillows aren't gonna help him in this situation so i wonder what sort of <laughs> no if anything it's bringing the fire directly to him <laughs> <laughs> i'm wondering what sort of yeah protection he has against fires i just feel like pure evil such as michael's cannot be destroyed by bullet or flame um mm. if he's not batman he might be like some sort of like celestial angelic being or mm. demon Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. He completely yeah. like, you know, bulletproof. It, it none of the things seem to matter. 
So he must be made of those things, right? Maybe his superpower is just he gets to be invisible when he wants to be. Oh, possibly. That would explain like how he keeps showing up places where we just left him like what seems like miles away. And then all of a sudden he's through the power of speed walking. um... Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which he might be good at considering all of his, considering his CrossFit routine. (laughs) But, you know, you never know. Okay. So strong female lead. Okay. So we have um, everybody, we have a couple criteria. Um, we take a look at whether or not um, the actress or actor is top build. Do they impact the plot or move the story forward? And do they have agency? So obviously we need to take a look at Jamie Lee first. Agreed. So I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah. I was like, it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, she is she does all the things she has all of the agency she uses it she just does she just is she just she's just jamie Uh, she is (laughs) that's it she is she just is she just is i also i feel the same like we haven't done alien or aliens yet uh and i feel like her and ripley just are they are agency they are uh (laughs) uh she she is impact she is impact she is the plot uh she's not she's both the device in the plot and the plot Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yes and then what about the granddaughter is that the other person you're thinking of yeah i think the granddaughter i think she's sfl worthy i even think karen is to an extent but i wouldn't call her like a top build uh she's just another character maybe in the next movie she has more of a, a Part to play but right now I think yeah just Jamie Lee and Ali Ali San so you think Ali San is top build over mm. Judy Grace character maybe yeah I mean she actually had like a like a storyline going if Judy Greer didn't fair fair yeah Judy Greer's it's more of like an underscore for SFL <laughs> yeah <laughs> We need to pick um, a movie with Judy Greer is the lead so we can give her an SFL because I just want to give her one. <laughs> she I know. It. She's totally worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And the granddaughter, yeah, she impacts the plot because she, well, she keeps the connection between the grandmother and her mother, between grandmother and mother. Grandmother. <laughs> grandmother. And then she, <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> And then she also, um, you know, escapes him Mm -hmm. um, and escapes the doctor, Mm -hmm. which like no loyalty doc. I mean, he had to have known that his, his time was up. Michael had his number, but anyways, like that's insane. Yes. I just hated the way that uh, the doctor was always speaking about uh, Michael. Like he's like watching a nature documentary. He's like, oh, he's out in the wild again. I was like, who are you narrating this to? Oh, like, I'm so confused. There's Michael in his natural habitat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look at him go. Yes. <laughs> he is a vulture. Ooh, Ooh he's a predator. Yeah. Look at he him, was very into it. I just, oh, I, I love it. If Michael had like a night, like a YouTube channel and it was like only him doing like, like people do like morning routines and night routines. Like I would watch that every single day to see exactly what he was doing. What's uh, he doing? What's he, what's he doing? Like what kind of creams is he using? Like how is he aging so well? Like really like give me all the secrets. Uh, it's probably like my grandma said, it's just oil of Olay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Local CVS. That's all you need. Stop, everybody. Stop spending more money. I love okay. it. <laughs> Just a little dabble. Dab, yes. dab. Oil okay. of Olay. Okay. I think the big question uh, that is, you know, starting now, and then we'll see how things, um, you know, progress, transform in the next in the next episode. But like, what were your thoughts on femininity in Halloween? Oh, goodness. Um, Well, 
I mean, I saw Jamie Lee Curtis, like there really wasn't, she didn't, uh, she didn't come across as, like she exhibited some masculine traits, quote unquote, masculine traits in the sense that she was just like really not emotional about the whole thing and prepping and just kind of like very rational and logical about prepping. Although she did definitely have emotions because she was drinking quite a bit. So she was definitely burying some trauma. But um, I feel like she did exhibit stereotypical masculine traits, but she came across as equally feminine to me as well. So I don't know. I think it was, it wasn't really a commentary on femininity and masculinity to me. There were just as many men who died as women. Um, just equal opportunity, really. <laughs> um, but I don't, yeah, I don't really know. What do you think? I think I kind of was leading the opposite. Like I see those masculine traits like as very prominent. I wish that they, and hopefully they do in the next movie, like restore a bit more like aesthetic femininity to Jamie Lee, because I was like, I understand she's like, uh, you know, for yeah. her character aesthetics uh, are not a priority. She's trying to save her family's life right now. She doesn't have time to get highlights. Like I get it, but yeah. also yeah. like everything about her um, in the realm of aesthetics is like, kind of let go the aesthetics uh, yeah yeah and I was like I, I understand I see what you did there uh to the <laughs> to the cast and crew but I'm like also please restore some of those like like I like the scenes where she was crying um and you can see that this is like more than just a um protection of her family like that she has regrets like she's lived her life you know and I think it I think Allison brings that out in her where she's like you know, like, I feel like people always say that, like, grandparents are parents' second chances to do things differently, and I think she mm -hmm. sees that in Allison, so I do like their dynamic. Um, it's unfortunate that Karen's the one who's being left out of that dynamic because she's the child. Mm -hmm. um, right. Jamie Lee, or Jamie Lee? Right. Jamie Lynn. <laughs> Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee. <laughs> Wait, who's Jamie Lynn? <laughs> like, Jamie Lynn Spears? Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I see what you mean. I think the emotion that she showed showed a little bit of um I just I don't know I'm trying to stop myself at the same time from thinking that emotions are feminine and strength is masculine you know mm -hmm. um but stereotypically speaking it is and you know femininity is in in itself a strength and yeah she wasn't really focused there we didn't see a lot of that we didn't see a lot of that, but I didn't think she was stripped entirely of it. But I, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens now, now in the next movie on Halloween Kills. It's November 1st. Uh, Michael has potentially escaped a burning building and being shot mm -hmm. multiple times. Uh, with, you know. I know. And then I'm like, was it worth it? God. Just all of those regrets. And then also, um, if the strengths and traits, so we're saying that they're mostly masculine, does she prosper as a result or meet an untimely end? She pro I mean, I wouldn't say prosper, <laughs> but she definitely survives as a result of those stereotypically masculine traits. I agree, but I do also, and I'm like, this is probably just like bad phrasing, but I do think that like, her like uh you know like if this is a pendulum of masculinity and femininity as this pendulum she's overcorrected into masculinity and mm -hmm. abandoned some things that uh i think may have been um helpful uh to her journey like you know if she's a real person like some things to her journey um mm -hmm. that uh reside in the realm of femininity <laughs> mm -hmm. uh not a bad thing. You got to survive. I've never been attacked by a serial killer. So I, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any personal experience <laughs> yeah. to draw from. Um, so I can't say she did it wrong. Yeah. But um, I have notes. Little... I have notes. I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, like now we know what to do. Yeah, so thank move. You. <laughs> right. Change yeah. your name. Uh, Change your name. Get that CBT. <laughs> get that CBT. Like move to a different country. Yeah. Like and make it like, so he has to, you know, he has get to a passport. travel. Yeah. <laughs> you can't kill me. You can't travel, bitch. <laughs> See you. I'll be in New Zealand. <laughs> Yeah, like Michael, you know, he's not. Uh, I maybe would, he would. Maybe, maybe he would try to <laughs> try to find her. Maybe he'd swim. I don't know. You never know. You never know what he'd be willing to do. Maybe he has the ability to fly. Like we still maybe. are unclear. Well, there is a movie where he goes to space. So I mean he can he can get anywhere. So maybe there are is no you safe serious? place. Yes. That is <laughs> they true, cryogenically yeah. freeze him and then he's released in like transport on like a spaceship, I want to say. Oh, that was a that was a pretty funny one though. That was pretty. Funny. <laughs> well, now I at least I know there's zero rationale for anything he's doing because even if we're forgetting or zero rationale for like anything he's able to do. So even if we're forgetting that the '90s existed, they're still using the same sort of logic. Like, of course he lived then. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was that Halloween? Oh. oh my God, that was so funny. I love that. They just don't give a fuck. That's nope. what that's about. Nope. They're like, hey, you know, I've or maybe always that was been curious Jason about in space. I don't know. One oh. of them. Some guy wearing a mask was in space. It was amazing. Uh, that's fine. I love it. Oh, everybody. That's, yeah. That's that's the show for it's you know, it, we're leaving you with the most uh mm-hmm painful of cliffhangers until because I'm on the edge of my seat I want to know what happens next uh I yeah. need to know if any of my predictions are, are correct do you have any predictions for the next movie before we see it like what would you like to see happen you know I'd like to see him and Jamie like maybe have a heart to heart like Michael just <laughs> like a couple's he just, counseling he just gets, <laughs> this he is just, still a rom-com there's still hope for the rom-com version of this movie <laughs> I want them to sit down grab some coffee <laughs> and just you know I want him to really get vulnerable here yeah I want to know I want to know I want him to just at least they just have a truce for like 60 minutes mm-hmm. and then he's like okay done and then she runs you know like just something I'd like him to I want to hear a little bit more about his backstory um before he kills and you know, then also just some little gems in there, like, so we get to know him, like, what's his favorite ice cream flavor? What's his favorite movie? Just dehumanize him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to, I really want to, because, you know, we already developed some compassion in this one. Yeah. Um, let's just, let's just push that forward. But no, re- in real talk, um, I have, I truly have no idea. Like, I can't, make heads or tails of what is possibly going to happen I'm curious how he lived or if that will even be explained yes that's where I'd start that really is like the biggest mystery for me. yeah I just love the idea of him like somehow surviving this in this huge fire I just hope that he's hiding underneath a table or something something like <laughs> super just basic. quivering <laughs> yeah this whole time he's been afraid of fire and like nobody said like, he's hiding under I don't know is there such a thing as a fireproof blanket yes that's a real one. thing yeah like every, like the science lab <laughs> there you go he found one he just kind of you know snuggled under there yes Hmm. just made himself real tiny yeah real cozy then he fell asleep and then he's like oh I'm sorry there's a fire Mm. oh (laughs) yeah what do you think what are your hopes what are your hopes and dreams my hopes and dreams that this does turn into the rom-com I was hoping for that's my first one and then I also think that this like family from the other side of the tracks has something to do with Michael escaping like it just just brought up too many times uh, okay. for me to to not build some theory as to they're involved mm-hmm. in some way with Michael and then three I'd also like there to be some sort of greater doomsday cult scenario um who is like trying to get you know 
Michael to hit a super bonus level of kills because that means something to them. Like once he hits a hundred kills, then mm. he ascends as a mm. representative and we get all heaven's gate about it. And then he, there's a rocket that's going to take him and them somewhere else. Oh. Yep. I love that. <laughs> That's way more creative than mine. Yeah. Yours is like I, I, very human and realistic. Yours had like a good heart. Mine is complete fantasy. <laughs> yeah, but I could think more in fantasy. I do. I like that. I like that he, yeah, maybe he just ascends. I think so, because you can't kill him. And I kind of don't want him to die. Well, no, because they can't stop being able to make these movies. Right? There's another one. They've already released that 2022. There'll be another one. So you'll get a part three to the Halloween series well, next year. Well, so here's year. the thing, though. There's no, then there's no suspense about whether or not he's going to die, though. Well, I don't know. Maybe somebody new is taking up the mantle. The, at the, the last shot is the granddaughter holding Michael's knife. So maybe, you know, this is what happened when it happened to Jamie Lee. And who knows what happens when it happens to the daughter or the granddaughter. <gasps> maybe she, she takes does. it up. Yeah. yeah what if she kills I like that yeah I like that if then she becomes the killer mm-hmm. yeah and she she has her own mask <laughs> it's a Dolly Parton mask <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just of her favorite singer yeah <laughs> I like that and the yeah. first one she kills is that terrible boyfriend yes I'm sure there's going to be a scene in this movie where he tries to kill her. Um, the boyfriend? Yeah. Oh. He was just okay. so, like, strangely angry at her. And then, like, he, at, the, at the dance, I was like, everything about this interaction is strange. Uh, like, he's making out with some other girl, and then he's, like, yelling at her uh, about, like, being too emotional about him making out with someone. I was like, this I is just, like... he even denied it or something. Yeah. I was like, what? I just yeah. saw that. And I was like, this is, like narcissism 101 uh like you're bad at narcissism you're a baby narcissist you're not quite good yet uh yeah. and so I'm like oh yeah. I hope you don't develop quickly mm. yeah it's narcissism with very very tiny letters yeah <laughs> like not even just not capital letters like just teeny tiny narcissism just written out very small that's what he is agreed agreed we um, need to capture him with a net that's yes we need to capture all the men I guess maybe they maybe they are saying something about the men in this film because they were all kind of dimwits um, oh my god good point <laughs> yeah they all kind awesome. of dimwits or manipulative like the women weren't like you know one like great but they had some like some wit to them they had some yeah smarts they were prepared like all like the cop who was the same cop from the original movie right uh he was it's just, just like silly. had done no prepping no prepping he was just silly he's like what what mm-hmm. like just a small town like Wee! and there's then, a killer um, loose in Haddonfield again what what and then the doctor mm-hmm. creeper was just very silly um the quote-unquote nice guy mm-hmm. very silly the boyfriend very silly actually you're right they they really were just like mm, the dudes, the terrible terrible dudes. Yeah, good. So let's hope nice. for a redemptive a redemptive male character in this next film. Maybe maybe a We're love not. interest for Jamie. I don't know. Do we have um, time for that? It's only one day, but maybe. Uh, maybe they'll call in the FBI and then they'll get criminal. Uh, what is that show that Criminal Minds in? And then one of them will fall in love with Jamie, and that'll be a thing. I don't think she has time for any other love story other than michael that's true don't 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 be disloyal these are twin flames yeah that's true granted but don't twin flames they're like they're twin flames but they're not really good together yeah so i think that's what's happening so maybe she has a love story but then she has a little just a little on the side yeah michael i like that i like picturing her and michael just sneaking around right I do. I think the mask is going to slip and she'll be like, what? You're gorgeous. Why are you doing this? Um, uh, you'll be like, wait, I never saw you without the mask. You're also gorgeous. I kind of love you. Maybe I'll stop murdering. I'll put down my knife. 
Yes. <laughs> Let's work out together. Yes. Yes. They can both run the same obstacle courses that Jamie Lee created. Uh, and he'll show her his cement block and she'll show him all those dolls she has in the back that are shot up. Yeah, it'll be so cute. <laughs> what an amazing meat cute he tried to kill me for 30 years guys but then we saw we locked eyes and it was done it was done he had me oh they saw they sign up for class pass and they just yeah. do a couple of pilates classes he loves the reformer i love the reformer uh, i've never done it but i so love fun. that i went yesterday oh so good yeah <laughs> oh my god guys i think we yeah. got it what do you rate what do you rate what do you rate this i'm gonna give it uh I'm going to give it a three and a half. I think for, uh, I mean, they already had so much to work with. Uh, I don't, yeah, they had so much to work with. So I'm not going to give it, you know, the best and highest of marks because I feel like, you know, I had to read into the story a lot. Like if I didn't, like if you right. had never seen Halloween and are unfamiliar with the series that I feel like this is a lot to take in uh, because that was me. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm like, you know, some of us have been putting in time with, Hall with Halloween. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking right. now at like the years like that movies have come out. 1980, 78, 81, 82, 88, 89, 95, 98, 2002, 2007, oh God, 2009. No uh, like it, it's been a, a long time. <laughs> I had I had no idea. I would give it a three. Um, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed it. It's well made. Uh, yeah, well. yeah. It was. I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. Like, I am kind of curious about the '78 version. I've never seen Halloween, so this <gasps> was my watch first. It. This was my first Halloween. I cannot go back and watch all of those, but just watch the first one. It's really good. You really see like the final go girl tropes being uh, being born with Jamie Lee's okay. uh, the Scream Queen. Scream Queen. Yes. And it, you know, for camp value. Yes. Uh, if you like any okay. of those nineties campy movies, this is where it all starts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This I do. And, uh, Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas, uh, which we did do on the podcast and everyone loved it. <laughs> well, we did the second one, right. Or the remake. The yeah. actual remake, right. Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. it. I think. I think so. Until next time, we got to go see this movie. I hope you guys go see it. Um, I think it's also on Paramount plus uh if you already have paramount plus or do the trial it's one week free i think so boom nailed it <laughs> and also it's on amazon oh yeah right and prime but mm -hmm. i mean if you do need paramount plus for sure definitely mm -hmm. worth it um and you can find us on all the socials so you can find us on instagram at strong female pod yeah and we are on twitter tweet at us if you have any recommendations for movies or fun halloween things we're sfl underscore chicago and rate, review, and subscribe. You know, we're looking to just do this forever. So help us. <laughs> help us. Help us. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye.